Shine a light on those outstanding talents in the industry category. All over the country, a quiet revolution is mobilising and it's changing the face of Ireland. In the front line are the entrepreneurs, courageous men and women who imagine a future and then make it happen. Theirs is a vision that sees opportunity where others see only adversity. Theirs is a mindset filled with ideas and optimism. And theirs is a voice determined to fight for our prosperity. This is a community united in the cause. This is the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. It's week two of the competition, and this week the judges' focus turns to the industry category. These entrepreneurs have been surviving and thriving despite the economic storm clouds, and the judges will have a tough job choosing just one of them to acclaim. It is very, very difficult for everybody across the island of Ireland. But through the smokescreen of austerity, entrepreneurship is very much alive and well. It's taken a different view. People are, have to be quicker, have to be smarter, have to use their money much, much better. With the industry category, our judges are really looking at businesses and entrepreneurs that maybe had a platform or a traditional business, but through innovation and technology are growing those businesses and growing jobs. Wherever we live in Ireland, we can see the spirit of entrepreneurship all around us, in big ways and in small. It's the hometown heroes of the industry category that are to the forefront this week. I've been clocking up the miles on my journey to meet the nominees in this year's competition. But the two men I'm about to meet truly have the country covered. John Tuhis and Dave Field's Parcel Delivery Service Nightline delivers one million parcels a month to businesses and private customers. John and Dave worked for competing courier providers in their early careers. And despite being in business together now, that competitive streak has not left them. This evening, though, we're backing the same thing. The Nightline Boys' other thoroughbred, Radira. Come on, Radira! 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 Well man. Good man. Good man. <laughs> we are we got third. Yeah. So Dave, John and yourself weren't always back in the same horse. You were in competition with each other. Back in the good old days, yeah, the two of us worked for competing US integrators and we used to meet on the ramp in Dublin Airport. He'd be in his transit and I'd be in mine full of freight. We, we were both loading net separate aircrafts and both had the same kind of deadlines and deadlines so to get off, but usually mine got away about three minutes before his, you know, so <laughs> About 25% of all the parcels in the country pass through Nightline's hands. If you're not there to receive your delivery, a new service, Parcel Motel, might be the solution. Located at convenient places with 24-hour access, the Parcel Motel lockers will hold your parcel securely until you can collect it. It's essentially a self-service parcel delivery terminal. We're going to locate 400 of them across the country at convenience stores and petrol stations. And it means that customers will be able to collect their online shopping 24-7 uh, um, on Saturdays and Sundays in a time that's convenient to them. And it'll be a lower cost solution for online retailers to deliver their parcels. In each of the parcel motels there's 80 lockers so we can actually do complete 80 deliveries to one locker within probably 60 minutes, where imagine trying to find 80 residential addresses, the guy be out all day. We complement each other, we do kind of different things within the business, but it works well for us. I think we've had to be careful as well in that our wives might be watching this, and they'll probably say, well look, uh, they spent more time together in the last 20 years than they have with us. So the sacrifices to be made, I think, and I think that's important in any partnership. Is that, is that 60 euros each way or what? It's um, not 60, it's 10 euros each way. And it's, uh, that was the first three places in that race, but unfortunately there was a horse taken out. So now, what does that mean? Now we're only paying the first two. <laughs> I'm deadly serious. You mean I'm getting nothing on the horse? Nothing, nothing. But you can't hurt? No, but you can keep the ticket for a souvenir. Yeah. <laughs> Family businesses bring their own challenges and rewards. The next business was started 40 years ago to provide jobs for six brothers. Since then, it has grown into a major employer in Maharafel. 
former Derry footballer Brian McArlane captains Genesis Crafty. An artisan bakery supplying bread and confectionery to supermarkets in Ireland and the UK. The quirky brand is designed to appeal to modern tastes and it has transformed a home bakery into a multi-million pound enterprise. Today, though, I'm meeting Brian in an unfamiliar place for him, watching from the sidelines. Big game on here tonight. Big game, championship game, yeah. Yeah, who's playing? Uh, I don't club my felt, uh, Dolphin Ross are playing Balai. And you have two lads playing here tonight? Yeah, David's the team captain and Simon, so uh, we are going to see how they go in a championship game. Yeah, tell me about your company and the bakery. Mum and Dad started, um, and bit by bit, I was the, la I'm the second, but I was the last of, well, the fifth brother joining in, Damien, the younger fella, came in about uh, 15 years ago or so. So we're all in there now and living close to home. That's a serious family business. Yeah, well, everybody has a role. There's 180 people employed there, so it's easy to accommodate six brothers within that. We're very artisanal because of our home bakery origins and we've continued the essence of what we believed in in 1968. We carry that through because that is our point of difference. You could automate certain processes, but we refuse to do that because automation quite often leads to uh, an inferior product. You know, in the scones, everything is punched, literally, as you would do at home. And a lot of those traditions and methods we still use and that's because it, it makes for a better product. The company is committed to handcrafting their products and coupled with the eye-catching modern branding, this has helped put Genesis Crafty in the top league. And Brian sometimes draws on his sporting experience to keep it there. I find with the brothers I'm able to communicate to him because we all understand the language of sport, you know, and that makes it easy and say, well, you know, if this was a football team, what would you do? Or, you know, when a change has to be made and a game's not going too well, so it's the same at work. Sometimes you have to change your team. So are we watching now your successors in the business? Not necessarily, no. No. I'd rather they go off and do their, do their own thing. You know, it'd be hard to integrate six sets of cousins, I think. Yeah, I see. That could be, that yeah, could be so a challenge. Yeah, we, we need to sort of keep growing a little bit more before we can accommodate all of them. Running a business takes 24-7 commitment. And very often, your personal and business life blurs. But when a personal passion drives you to succeed, some really special results follow. Nesting in the rolling hills of County Down is Dennis Lane's artisan meats business, Finnebroke. Chef Heston Blumenthal is among the customers for his high quality venison. Finnebroke also supply pork products for M&S and Paul Rankin, and with great success. The company has achieved steady growth of around 40% annually. I just want to be proud of what I do. You know, that's that's what I want to do. And, and if that, if more people agree with me, then I'm probably going to earn enough money to survive if I'm smart enough. So money is really secondary. Very secondary. Absolutely secondary. It's completely secondary. Always has been. So there isn't a, a visionary plan to build this. No, it wasn't. There was. I like animals. Yeah. I like looking after animals. I like food. And it's just grown so just from that. Putting joining those dots together. Yeah. Yeah. The company takes its name from the ancient woodland it occupies, and the herd of deer that roam 700 acres of Finnebroke Estate are still central to the company's product lines and ethos. This year, Dennis launched the Good Little Company brand, a commitment to his philosophy that food can make a difference. Cut it as thin as you can. Just as thin as you possibly can, and then just eat it with your fingers. Well, fork. I see, I'm, I'm just a little way. Mm. That working? That's working. There's always a strong market there for people who want to go for quality, mm -hmm. you know, and they're confident they can trust the source of the product. That's what you're providing, isn't it? I think the Good Little Company, which is a brand that is quite close to my heart, that we put together a few years ago, it, there's more to it than that. What it's saying is that, that you can trust us to make a product that will be good for you. Mm. You can trust us to look after the animal and the environment for that product and you can trust us for every packet of sausages or burgers or meatballs, whatever you happen to buy, we will donate seven pence per pack to Christian Aid to feed people in Malawi. So it's good for you, good for the environment and good for somebody else. People really love to work in that environment and really love to, people love to buy that sort of stuff. It's, you, you feel really good about doing something decent for a change. 
The industry category is very much about Irish entrepreneurs building their business, generating jobs here on the island of Ireland. And where most of us see only austerity, these entrepreneurs see opportunity. I think it's really important Ireland gets to see the high quality of entrepreneurs we have in this category. After the break, my journey continues and I'll be meeting the remaining nominees in the industry category. Travelling around Ireland, meeting the visionaries in the industry category of the Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. How they got started and how they continue to drive success is the very story of Irish entrepreneurship itself. Times are tough for consumers. But this next business, up the road in Lisburn, are booking the trend and are booming. Stuart and Russell Dixon are the second generation at the helm of Decora. The company designs, manufactures and distributes window blinds, shutters and a large array of components from their two sites in Lisburn. Each week, 11,000 made-to-measure blinds leave the factory. And when the brothers invite me to tee off with them, I'm hoping that one or two of County Down's other famous exports will be joining us. Hi, Stuart, how are you doing? I've always been looking forward to this game of golf. Just for some. Right. <laughs> where's, where's my partner, Rory McElroy? I, I'm in County Down, you're supposed to get him for I me. Think he's still in America. <laughs> Decor has been part of your life since you were, since you were kids, oh, really. Yes, I mean, when we were growing up, you know, nine, ten years old, we, we saw our mother and father working in the business, starting the business, you know, so it's, it's very much in our blood. I think as the company grew, all the profit was always retained in the company and it allowed us to go further afield with our purchasing. Put it this way, in China and Asia, we would probably be the best known company in Europe. And that's always been through what Russell and I have been taught. Keep a balance sheet strong, keep the money in the business and keep investing. And in times like now, when you really need that momentum to keep going, it sort of stood us in good stead. The downturn in construction has indented Decora's success. Their blinds are filling a gap in the market for those unable to move and looking for a little home improvement. And how do you divide your work? Or which of you is the boss? We're both the boss. You're both the boss. Depends Good what answer. day, depends what situation. Um, Russell's always worked on sales and marketing. That's where his expertise is. I followed Dad out into Asia, so that's where I would tend to know a little bit more. Russell basically tells me what he wants, and I try and go get. <laughs> and I think it's, it's, it's as simple as that. And guys, do you see your families getting involved in Decora, like your kids? My kids are um, three and six, so it's yeah. certainly a bit early to, to say that, but I think... I think that the, the enjoyment that we've had out of the business and what we've gained out of the business, I would like to have. I would like to see them have the same experiences. Okay. I'm single. You're single. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing the field. <laughs> oh, I hope you have that. He's playing the field. <laughs> In uncertain times, it's easy to see the attraction of one of those pensionable jobs. And if you get an opportunity. There's nothing wrong with leaving that pensionable job and pursuing your dream either.
former college lecturer Colin Piercy started DigiWeb from his spare room as a web hosting service. Now it's a leading independent Irish telecoms company with its own data centres and fibre optic networks. Today he's brought me up the Dublin Mountains, a place he's familiar with from his days in the startup. This was effectively as we look out across, look across that, that Dublin expanse here. there. Yeah. We now own and operate the main fibre network that connects all of the data centres and business parks all across Dublin and the same in, in most of the other large towns and cities. Uh, we're inside most of the telephone exchanges where we put our own equipment so customers can switch directly to us and building out wireless infrastructure network such as we have here in this, in, in this mast uh, to, to bring services out into suburban and rural areas. Our smallest customer will be a small home customer with a telephone line or a, a wireless broadband connection through to entire government departments. We connect, uh, any given day we connect about 300,000 students to the internet in primary and secondary schools. Probably in the early days, I had the screwdriver out, I was climbing up the mast, doing all those jobs. I do remember one particular Stephen's Day morning where I had to climb up a mast and realign an antenna. The team now really take the day-to-day -day operational side of the business and my focus is much more on spotting opportunities or mergers and acquisitions of other businesses. All done at pace. If it's not at pace, I'm not interested and that's probably, it's probably the pace now has taken my interest more recently than the pure technology side of things. With hundreds of kilometres of its own fibre network, DigiWeb's commitment to investing in infrastructure gives them greater control over their services. In 15 years, the company has grown from Cullum's spare room to a group with 40 million euros turnover. There's a sense of achievement certainly, but it's bloody scary too, because when you pull up in the car park and there's, there's that many cars there and you come into the office, there's that many people there and you just feel, we've built this business up from absolutely nothing, all of us together but this business is now supporting a lot of other people and their jobs, their ambitions, their where they want to go, what they want to do. So that's an incentive to keep pushing it on and just drive on and drive on. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what are the next mountains you're going to climb? <laughs> um, the, the next thing for us is to build the scale up to about 200 million uh, turnover of business. Well, Colm, I look forward to meeting you on the top of Kilimanjaro someday. <laughs> Park, thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, I'm about to meet a man who's a captain of industry in every way. County Down Farmer's son, John McCann, is a true visionary. Willowbrook Farms supply all the major multiples with more than 300 types of prepared vegetables, salads, stir-fries and soup mixes. John's other great passion in life is sailing, but the weather today has scuppered our chances of getting out on the water. Still, in both arenas, success has followed in John's wake. This is where I live, Park. It's where overlooking Strangford Loch. This is our farm, farm on the right here built my house on, on our land. And John, yeah, tell me about this. World champion Flying 15, third place in the world, New Zealand 1982, John McCann. I've been Irish champion twice back in the 80s and we sailed for Ireland in the World Championship. We got third place, which was quite an effort, I can say. After four decades in business, John has seen all the trends in the supermarket trade and he has adapted to supply them all. The next stage for this £20 million a year business would be dreamed up in Willowbrook's New Food Innovation Centre. And it all grew from two fields on the family farm, borrowed from his dad for an experiment. Back then, vegetables were sold in dirty bulk. We packed it, we barcoded it, we put a label on it. The self-service shops were just emerging then in supermarkets, and they, they wanted that product to sell. And how many years we, ago is that? When did you start this? About 40 years ago. So in my early twenties, and in your teens, <laughs> yes, and there was nobody doing yeah. it then. So you were you were the first in I, Ireland. I, I, I was this. first, yes, the first big supermarket. I delivered directly myself to that supermarket. Did you learn anything from the sailing and competing at world championship level that you brought into business? Business is competitive. You have to be competitive in the sailing. We have to be competitive in business, and we had to try and look. Uh, see forward and see around corners and see what was coming at us in the next year, the next six months. Sailing was a bit like chess, because when you got a beat, you have to work out all the wind shifts and different things. And business is like that as well. If you can see that, you hope to get there before the next person. I think that's what I learned, and the sailing brought that. I think, I think it brought that to help us, yeah. When a business changes hands, the former employees can often feel themselves as a crossroads, while some move on to other jobs. There are a special few 
that see opportunities from the ashes of their former work life. And one such man is on duty today at the Cork Food Festival. Michael Barry is the toast of Ireland's largest independent drinks importer. Barry and Fitzwilliam are wholesale distributors for more than 100 brands of beer, wine and spirits, such as Corona, Jägermeister and Hardy's. And it was here in the Rebel County that 20 years ago, the cute Corkman spotted his opportunity. I started in Murphy's Brewery as a trainee accountant. The brewery went into receivership in 1982. Right. And I had a plan, believe it or believe it not. And within a few months, I was up and going, and we started life as Barry's Wines and Spirits. And with three people and myself, we managed to turn over two million pounds, two and a half million euros, a proxy says, and made a small profit. None of this five-year plan and burning money, and I like so made a profit. Entrepreneurs start off, cash is king. Yeah. You cannot be burning cash. You need no. to have that, in my world anyway. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Today, we'll, hopefully, we're on target to do 70 million turnover. It's the second year of the Cork Food Festival. We got involved last year. Cork has been very good to us when we started off as an embryonic company in 1982. And now that we've got marketing funds uh, for our brands, it's great to be able to give something back to the community, but at the same time getting something for the brands as well. Are people's tastes changing? That radically. Absolutely. The beer business today is where the wine business was 20 years ago. My perception is people are getting bored at home with the cheap and cheerful whatever lager beers, yeah. or can or whatever. Uh, and they want something different. And they're experimenting more and more. And that's where we think the opportunity is here. Now you've built a hugely successful company. It's the largest independent distributor in all of Ireland. Mm -hmm. You've achieved your goal. Mm -hmm. Where to from here? The golf course? We've only got halfway there, Padre. We're only halfway there. Mm -hmm. so We're celebrating 30 years in business this year. And I'll be happy the day we celebrate our 50th year in business in 2032. This is great fun. I love the buzz. Imagine buying, selling, tasting, particularly the wine side, but you know, the odd spirit, bottle of beer now and then, and you actually pay yourself to do this. Where did I go wrong? Uh, you took life too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I've now met all the finalists in the industry category. In difficult times, they have gone back to basics to secure their businesses and used incredible imagination and grit to grow them. They all deserve our acclaim, but the judges will have to separate them and choose just one winner. The industry category, that's the engine of our economy. Your challenge is to see the entrepreneurship in that. So this is a big one, this is not easy. The industry category is one of the hardest to judge because, you know, there are companies typically that are in the Irish market, in a very difficult situation in the Irish market, but there's three or four in there that could win. In this particular group of finalists, we see people who survived the tide going out. The entrepreneur that I would choose is somebody who has executed basic business skills, fundamental business skills, uh, with flair. I think there are some uh, tremendous companies within this category across a variety of sectors as well. And these are the companies that Ireland will need in order to be able to create the value add, create the jobs that we will so badly need here. As somebody who's won some accolade in this competition before, I know how much of a difference uh, winning can make. And right up to the last moment when we make the decision, I'll fight tooth and nail for the entrepreneurs that I feel deserve this prize. The thing about entrepreneurs is that they're all winners. And every one of our finalists wants to win, and rightly so. But what we see also with our judges is they are proven winners. And they're very, very competitive. And they have their ideas on who should be the entrepreneur of the year for 2012. And they will fight really, really hard to ensure that their voice is heard and that the right outcome is achieved. Next week, I'm on the final leg of my journey meeting the entrepreneurs who are running world-beating international businesses from right here in Ireland. <laughs>